times are tough, but that doesn't mean we have to stop eating burritos. In this video, we will make a week's worth that are freezer friendly, have a ton of flavor, and keep you full, all while costing a dollar a piece. If you stick around, I'll even show you how I got these under one dollar per burrito. Let's get into it. To make a burrito, of course you need to fill it and roll it. But the only thing we have to do besides that is make some beans. Luckily, making beans is both stupidly easy and cheap. Another huge benefit of beans, they have eight grams of protein per serving and a whopping five grams of fiber to boot. Grab a strainer and add some beans. I grab out any beans that don't look plump and juicy and once we have 230 grams worth of them, it is time to give them a quick rinse under water. Let's add our beans to the pot along with 800 grams of water and 5 grams of salt. We will give everything a quick stir and add to a stovetop on high heat. In less than 10 minutes, these bad boys will be boiling and we will turn the stovetop to low and cover with a lid for about 3 hours or until the beans are easily squishable with a pinch of our fingers. Every time I prep this recipe and the beans are simmering, I take down some pre-workout and go to the gym. Gorilla Mind just released their updated pre-workout formula that has over 33,000 milligrams of active ingredients in each serving. It's been helping me push hard in the gym during my current cut and has helped me set new PRs while getting lean. If you want a pre-workout that can take your workouts to the next level, check the link in the pinned comment and use code E4CM for 10% off your order. After the gym, I stopped at the store for an onion and some fat-free cheese. When I got back, there was about 40 minutes until the beans were finished, so now is a good time to take about 10 minutes to prep the rest of the other ingredients. First, we will chop an onion. Cut it, cut it in half root to stem and chop off about an inch from the stem. Peel back a couple layers of the onion, point the knife towards the root, and slice the onion every quarter inch from edge to edge as close to the root as possible. Then push the knife halfway into the onion at two or three different heights with the knife slightly angled downwards. Finish cutting the onion by going stem to root every quarter inch or so and repeat for the other half. We only need 100 grams of onion, the rest of which you can save for another batch of cheesy bean burritos or use it in my chicken tinga tostada meal prep recipe. Speaking of another batch, you can also make a double batch of these burritos if you want to have multiple in one meal or a couple weeks worth to store in the freezer, which we will discuss later. The only thing left to do is grate our cheese. Grating our own cheese adds so much more flavor and freshness. Any 2% cheddar cheese that is 90 calories per 28 grams will work here, but I liked sharp cheddar over regular cheddar in the testing process. Once we shred through the block, we will put it in a plastic bag and refrigerate. Unfortunately, there is only pre-shredded fat-free cheddar cheese available, so I already have that chillin' in the fridge as well. The beans still have some time left, so I'm gonna shower and burn some extra calories jamming to some Bobby Valentino. Yes, that is how I jam out every time I am in the shower. After my shower, I got sidetracked for over an hour with some coaching clients, but if you are like me and leave the beans simmering for longer than three hours, the beans will be waiting for you when you get back. And when I return, my beans are done as seen by the squish squish. We will dump our beans along with the bean juice into a large bowl and place the pot right back onto the stovetop and turn up to medium heat. The pot and stovetop are already warm, so it will only take a couple of minutes for the pan to come to temp and then add 6 grams of olive oil or the oil of your choice. Give the oil about 20 seconds to heat up and then add our onion into the pot. Listen to that sweet sizzle. Give the onions a toss so they are coated in oil and let's get our other seasonings prepped. Into a small bowl, we will add a pinch of Mexican oregano, chili powder, cumin, and smoked paprika. Then weigh out five grams of garlic and add it to a garlic press. Once the onions become translucent like this, press our garlic and give the pot a mix. After about 20 seconds, we will add our seasonings and mix everything in the pot once more. 20 more seconds will allow us to bring as much flavor out of the seasonings as possible or bloom them and then it's time to dump our beans back in. At this point, we have one of two options, but I am sure you are wondering, Nick, do I really need to make refried beans when I could just get them in a can? No, you don't but two things. First, this is going to increase the cost of each burrito about 55% or another 64 cents per burrito, which is kind of defeating the purpose of this video. Second, making fresh beans takes less than 10 minutes of prep time and you can go do whatever you want during the simmering process, as you could probably tell. But 
just to make sure I want to try them side by side. For the record, I have always eaten canned beans and have been a fan of them, but I've never compared them side by side. Salty, pretty damn good. This tastes like fake beans. Mine salty, you get those seasonings, a little bit of oil. Oh, yeah, these are definitely mine. 100%. It's so weird how these taste so fake and like disgusting. Choose your destiny, but for the fresh frijoles, it's time to smash. The first method is using a potato masher, specifically if we want a chunkier type of bean. However, I like some chunks of beans, but overall I want a smooth consistency, so I am going to use an immersion blender. Starting in one part of the pot, I will spin the immersion blender for a second or two, then move next to it and spin for another second, repeating the process throughout the pot until I get my desired chunkiness. This is exactly the chunk level I want, but we aren't done yet because these beans are way too liquidy and will never stay in a burrito. As you can see, they are already boiling and we need to simmer for an additional 6 to 8 minutes while constantly stirring until desired thickness is achieved. Please note, we need these beans thicker than what you would serve them as as a side dish, so make sure they look similar to this before cooling. The beans will also thicken as they cool. Now we are going to take them off of the heat and give them an hour or two to chill. During this time, you can take 20 minutes to prep my protein cheesecake or make one of my other 140 recipes in my cookbook. My cookbook gets updated with every new recipe I make for YouTube and owners get them before the video comes out. These recipes have been the main factor that made me go from this to this and put an end to yo-yo dieting forever. If you want a cookbook that could help you get to your goals and keeps on growing, check the link in the pinned comment and use code E4CM to get 10% off the book. Now that our beans have chilled, we will put them back into the bowl we used to hold the beans earlier. Then in another large bowl, we will add 150 grams of both the fat-free cheddar cheese and our freshly shredded sharp cheddar cheese. And always look for coupons or sales because with this one, I got multiple meal preps worth of burritos for under a dollar a piece during the testing process. Mix these cheeses together so they melt and taste better after cooking. Line your counter with five 9-inch tortillas that are 200 calories a piece. Onto each tortilla add about 160 grams of refried beans and 60 grams of cheese. Push the cheese into the refried beans so the burrito is easier to shape. Then with each burrito, fold in the sides, wrap the bottom tortilla or the part closest to you over all of the ingredients and using that tortilla flap, bring the ingredients towards the middle of the burrito until it is nice and tight and fold it over itself. You should have a solid seal on the burrito, but if a little bit of beans or cheese is visible, don't trip. Repeat the same process for the other four burritos. The next part is optional, but during the testing process, I found this added a ton of flavor and only takes three extra minutes. Into a preheated pan on medium heat, lightly spray two lines of oil and add two burritos folded side down onto the oil lines. Then using a spatula, press down on the tops of the burritos for about 15 to 20 seconds each. After about 30 to 45 seconds, they should be brown, but check to make sure they are to your preference. Once they are, lightly spray the tops of the burritos one more time and flip. Repeat the same process until brown. Brown the other three burritos and allow to cool on the counter. You can store these in the fridge for a week with no issue, but you can also throw these in a vacuum seal and into the freezer for when you need a meal in a pinch months down the line. If refrigerating, wrap one in parchment paper and heat up in the microwave for 60 to 90 seconds or until warm to your preference. I was using damp paper towels, but it stuck to the burrito too much for my liking, so parchment paper is the move. If frozen, wrap in parchment paper, but microwave each for 3 to 4 minutes or cook through. If you would like to bake these in the oven, which I highly suggest, check the pinned comment for instructions. These burritos are cheap, simple, and filling with 8 grams of fiber and 34 grams of protein. They are a no-brainer for anyone balling on a budget and would make a perfect lunchtime meal but you need dinner too. One dollar fully loaded chicken tinga tostadas are also possible and in this video here, I show you how to make a meal prep version that includes three tostadas per meal as well as 55 grams of protein. I will see you there. Until next time, deuces.